I'm standing in the garden of the British ambassador to Israel's residence here in Tel Aviv, and there's a party in full swing. This is a party in aid of a certain music competition that's taking place here in Israel this weekend. Amid the throng was our man in Israel, David Quarry. What a great party. We had some fantastic drag queens performing Eurovision hits. Drag queens. Drag queens and a drag king as well. Across Israel, you can't escape the mania for Eurovision. The flags, the posters, the wall-to-wall -wall media coverage. But if Israel likes Eurovision the competition, its relationship with Europe the continent is more ambiguous. Many Israelis see Europe as a source of trade and tourism, but also anti-Semitism and unfair criticism, above all for its occupation of the West Bank. They tend to view Europe as preaching solely at Israel and dismissing every other human rights violation in the world. Dalia Scheindlin is an Israeli pollster. They also see Europe as hypocritical because of Europe's own history with relation to the Jews. And you hear this very commonly in Israel. Look what they did to us just 70 years ago. And here they are telling us about human rights. I've come now to Eshkol, a region which is right in the south of Israel, very close to the Gaza border, where in recent days and weeks they've been vulnerable to rocket fire, balloon attacks, kite attacks. Elan Isaacson is the civilian head of security here. And he claims that EU aid in Gaza is being misused. Unfortunately, the money in the last couple of years is coming and the Hamas and the Jihad are taking most of the money and building terrorist tunnels, building uh, missiles. The EU insists the money going to Gaza is for food and health care, but suspicion of the institutions in Brussels runs deep and is led by Israel's Prime Minister. Before Christmas, Benjamin Netanyahu described the EU as hostile and hypocritical. And he's trying to divide the bloc by forming new alliances with countries in Eastern Europe whose leaders share his robust nationalism. And this worries European diplomats who claim the hostility is out of sync with reality. If you come to the West Bank, to the city of Ramallah, Palestinians talk with gratitude of the European money that's funding education and healthcare here but even they cannot hide their frustration with the European Union. European countries say the right things, but are shying away from assuming their responsibilities and doing the right thing. Dr. Noor Oder is an advisor to the Palestinian government and accuses the EU of political cowardice. I think if Europeans are really serious about being committed to the two-state formula, they need to defend it. And they need to defend it by recognizing Palestine, by saying that there are two states in this formula, by making sure that this occupation is actually costly rather than profitable for Israel. All this distrust for Europe matters because the long-awaited US peace plan for the region is expected soon. Britain's former Middle East minister, Alistair Burt, hopes Israel will allow Europe to play at least some role, even if few in Jerusalem or Washington seem to share his view. I think it's unhelpful not to recognise the importance that other partners and other neighbours can have. I think they could and they should listen to criticism and they should recognise a partnership with Europe is of fundamental importance just as much as the United States. Live from Tel Aviv, Israel, this is the first semi-final of the Eurovision Song Contest 2019. Well, it's semi-final night and I've come down to the Eurovision Park on the seafront in Tel Aviv and thousand upon thousand of Israelis have decided to come down and enjoy the festivities. There's big screens that you can watch the competition on. Proof, if ever you need it, that the people of Israel have really bought into the concept of Eurovision. But as for Europe, well, that's another question. <laughs>